Hi, Peter Detmer, instructor at Madison College. Today we're going to talk about frames and robotics. We're going to focus on the tool frame first and then the user frame. There are others, but those are probably the most common ones. Uh, first, let me explain what frames are used for. Now, frames are used to identify your part or your fixture. That would be the user frame because you set up a user frame and then you program the points based on the user frame, based on the parts that you have. So if your part moves, you can simply reteach the user frame and all those points move with that user frame. Now, tool frames are used to identify the main point of interest. The main point of interest is typically your uh, tool tip. So if you have a cutter, it might be the tip of the cutter. If you do a welding operation, it might be the tip of the torch. Uh, it's referred to as a tool center point. Then it also uh, allows you to jog easier. There's a frame called jog frame. So when you have a very complex part with different shapes, you use a jog frame to move along certain planes of the part. And lastly, it allows you for variations in process. So if your process changes, uh, you simply reteach the user frame or the tool frame if your tooling changed and all your points will be in the same spot as they were before because the robot will adapt to the change. So the world frame is your main frame from the robot. All the other frames are referenced by that world frame. Uh, world frame is through the center of joint one and the center of joint two. That's the origin, that's the point in space, it's zero, zero, zero from the factory. All the other frames are referenced off that frame. Then we have the tool frame. Again, that's your tool center point, your TCP, your main point of interest. We also have the jog frame and a remote tool center point. Those we don't get into, uh, I'll mention them again later, but uh, uh, jogging again, jog frame allows jogging to be easier and the remote tool center point is an add-on that you can use if you do some deburring or grinding operations when your main point of interest is not in the robot, but for example, a grinding wheel that you have to rotate around. So the world frame never changes. It's a default for all the other frames. Your tool frame, the TCP, it's located on the faceplate by default. It's also referenced as U-Tool in FANUC programming. I'm going to switch the screens here. And you will see in the graphic that there's a robot that has a spray gun with a red spray pattern on it. And you see a red spray pattern and that's where the main point of interest should be. However, the tool center point right now is on the faceplate of the robot. That's that green ball with the triad, the XYZ symbols on it. So we're gonna change the location of that so it correctly identifies where the spray pattern takes place. Here's another example, the different methods of uh, teaching the tool center point or the tool frame. Uh, we're not gonna uh, review them in detail. There are other references for that. Uh, but uh, again, by default, it's on the faceplate. Uh, you see in this graphic, we actually um, show a gripper and after the tool frame was taught, now the main, the tool center point is now at the, uh, between the jaws. Uh, here are a couple other examples that uh, highlight the tool center point uh, when it's not uh, in the default location. You know, on the weld gun, it's where the wire comes out. Um, and uh, when uh, you have you know, like a spot welding tool attached to the robot, you know, where the two fingers come together and take the spot welding. So let me show you what a tool center point looks like when it's not taut. So this robot I'm going to jog it in tool frame mode. So I'm going to press the chord key until it reads tool. The tool frame that's active is the one uh, by default 
in the robot. That's one. I'm going to speed up. I'm going to rotate yaw and pitch. So if you watch this, the robot rotates around the faceplate. You see the marker, the pencil tip is very difficult to uh, um, maintain a particular motion or you can't rotate over that point. That's what you want to achieve. You want to be able to rotate over your main point of interest, which is the tip of this pencil right here. So I'm going to do a direct entry method and uh, add the length of that pencil. I have a caliper here. I was able to measure the length from the faceplate to the pencil tip. I'm going to show you how you can enter that into the tool frame and how it changes how the robot jogs then. And I'll show you on the teach pendant how to set up and enter a direct reference tool frame. Go to menu, set up, go to frames. If you already see the detail screen, you can go previous and see the tool frame with its 10 available tool frames. You can press F3 to toggle between jog frames and user frames you can set up. How we want to stay in tool frame, I want to do a direct entry method of tool frame number one. So I simply press F2 for detail in method. You can see the options available, three point, six point in direct entry. I'm going to go down, choose direct entry. Then you can cursor to the value you want to enter. Now this pencil is directly in line with the faceplate. I'm going to enter the value that I measured earlier, which is 176 millimeters. So that's the only change I've made. Now I'm going to go back and jog the robot again, and you will see the difference it makes to the tip. To further highlight this, I'm going to jog the robot down so the two tips of this pointing tool and this pencil almost align. So now I'm going to change the jog method to tool again. I'm going to jog joint 5 and 6 or yaw and pitch. And you will see how the robot now rotates over the two tips. So the tool center point has now been changed. And you might ask, why would I want to set this up? Well, very often when you do uh, dispensing or welding applications, you have to identify where the tip is so you can go around a part. Without having the tool center point properly taught, this is almost impossible to accomplish. So that is the tool frame in FANIC programming. And uh, thank you very much and check back in to learn more about the user frames.